This week on Outdoor Bound TV. We travel to Nestor Falls, Ontario, Canada to meet up with Shane Pope of Northwest Flying. Now, float planes have played a vital role in the transportation of thousands of hunters and fishermen into the Canadian bush for years. And we get a chance to drop into the remote Otterskin Lake to fish for smallmouth bass with Dave Bonkey of Canadian Haven Resort. Then we head back to central Wisconsin for part three of the Wisconsin Food Plot Project. Oh, yeah! Right. Awesome. What a big old beast. 75 yards. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Minnesota Power. Team Smackdown Outdoors, Meyer Recreational Buildings, and Canada Outdoor Adventures. Environmental stewardship runs deep at Minnesota Power. We value clean air and water while delivering safe, reliable, and affordable electricity that enhances your comfort, security, and quality of life. Minnesota Power, powering the pace. Of industry. Of business. Life. Team Smackdown Outdoors. Team Smackdown Outdoors. Leading the way in custom outdoor art. At Meyer Recreational Buildings, you'll get a certified building experience where we assure you a worry-free, guaranteed, high-quality recreational building. Designed by outdoorsmen like you, Meyer Recreational Buildings are built with the highest quality American-made materials. Build with confidence. Build with Meyer. My name is Jeff Meyer from Meyer Recreational Buildings. Call me today for a better way to build. Visit our website at MeyerRecreational.com and pick out your design today. Offering professionally guided, all-inclusive packages, Canada Outdoor Adventures is a U.S.-based company specializing in great hunting adventures in Alberta, British Columbia, New Zealand, and beyond. Whether you're seeking that trophy of a lifetime, planning a hunt for you or your group, or taking your son or daughter on their first adventure, let Canada Outdoor Adventures handle all the details for you. To contact a pro staff member near you, visit our website, Canada Outdoor Adventures, the adventure of a lifetime. Hi everyone, welcome to Outdoor Bound TV. I'm your host, Kurt Walbeck. You know, float planes have been around since the turn of the century. Well, on this week's show, we're in Nestor Falls, Ontario, one of the hotbeds of float plane activity. Now we're headed into Otterskin Lake, one of the remote lakes serviced by Northwest Flying. Now our guide, Dave Bonkey, is along for the trip, so join us as we get geared up for the short flight to this beautiful remote Ontario Lake. Yeah, my name is Shane Pope here with Northwest Flying, Nestor Falls. Uh, 
just a short hour drive across the Fort Francis International Falls border. Gets you to our base here. Um, been in operation since I guess the early 60s is when Northwest Flying was, uh, was started. And my family's been involved. My father, he started flying here in the early 70s, I guess. And my family's owned the business since the mid 80s. This company in particular has been here in Nestor Falls since, like I said, way back in the uh, early 60s. You look at a map of Northwest Ontario and you see a lot of water. So, of course, the best way to get around these parts is obviously right here by these folk plants. So for a small town, really, there's a lot of pilots. It's just a way of life. Um, and it's, like I said, as you can see, um, the easiest way to get around these parts is by full plane. So you'd be surprised. You, you go into the, the grocery store and talk to some old codger and he's got his pilot's license, I'll bet you. Because uh, he, he, back in the day, he used to run a super cub or a middle plane or something like that. So it's just a part of this culture of Nestor Falls area is airplanes. And I think it's going to be that way for hopefully years to come. There's no other boats on this lake. We're the only people on this lake. So my name's Dave. I'm uh, the operator of Canadian Haven Camp in Nestor Falls, Ontario. And I still enjoy the opportunity to uh, come out and do some fishing. So when this opportunity came up, I certainly grabbed it. Smaller fish there, but they're definitely out on the reef here. Not a big fish, but it's a start. We'll see if we can find a few bigger ones on here real quick. There's another one. It feels like a little better fish, but not. Oh yeah, that's a nice fish. That's a dandy right there. That's what we're looking for off these main lake reefs. Oh, yeah, I can see a bunch more down there too, so that's good. There we go. Yeah, that's a solid fish. Oh yeah. That's a solid, solid otter skin smallmouth right there. Nice. That's a solid fish right there off a of main reef, main lake reef. All right, so uh, what we just caught that fish on on the main lake reef here is uh, we're using what's called a drop shot rig. So what we've done is we've come out to a deeper hole here, like I say, on a main lake reef, and we're using the Berkeley Gulp uh, smelt. So it has a real lifelike action when it's down there when you're drop shotting. You wanna wait a second, let them make sure they get the, uh, the bait right down in their mouths because if you jerk too soon you're going to lose a lot of fish and a lot of bait so that's a basic rig that we use here um, for deep water jigging off the reefs out here there's my fish right there right off the top of that real oh, nice too just where the light water meets the dark water seem to be where they're where they're hanging off the edge. That's just not, a, not as big as the last one, but definitely a nice fish. And the drop shot again. Let's see, we got a little bit of wind blowing up on the reef here, so these fish have sort of transitioned up a little bit onto that. We'll just grab the net here. There we go. There we go. Lost her bait, but that's all right. 
another small mouth off the off the drop shot. There we are, nice. Nice. There we go. So today we're on Otter Skin Lake. We've flown in with Northwest Air out of Nestor Falls. Uh, we decided to come in for some smallmouth. We've been graced with some really great smallmouth fishing. There we go. Nice. <laughs> so we just seen some fish out in the open deep water here surfacing chasing minnows and I quickly switched over to a white ghost X-Wrap and cast it out there and we'll first cast. Not hooked very well, but we'll see what we can do here. There we go. Nice. Now I'm not gonna dolly too much because I want to see if maybe I can pick up a couple more off this school here. Because they're hard to stay on when they're in the open water. So you gotta take quick advantage of them. You might get one, you might get half a dozen. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Mission by Matthews, True Fire Releases, Tacticam, and G2 Outdoor Products. This is my life. The Weekend Warrior. No more production lines or deadlines. This is why I work five days a week. I need speed, power, precision. I expect no less than the best. This is my best. This is my chance. This is my mission. Simple, efficient, powerful. Mission by Matthews. Well, Mark, I gotta hand it to you. I am loving my True Fire Hardcore. I wouldn't steer you wrong, brother. Not only is this thing extremely accurate on the range, its features are deadly in the field. What I noticed, whether you're sweating shooting does in the early season or shivering when that late season buck comes in, that jaw cannot come off that loop. I love my True Fire Hardcore. Wait, what do you got there? That's a Hardcore Forefinger. Give me that. Not this time, brother. <laughs> the True Fire Hardcore, available at your local retailer. Ben, what do you have on the front of your bow? This is the new Tacticam HD video camera and bow stabilizer, all in one. It features one touch easy recording in a waterproof housing, and it comes with universal mounting with a rechargeable battery. Film your hunt hands free in full HD. That's incredible. Where do you find those? Tacticam is available to purchase on our website or at an outdoor retailer near you. Tacticam, share your hunt. Hey everyone, we love to see the photos of the animals you harvest and the fish you catch here on Outdoor Bound TV. Well this season, our friends at Petrick Service Station have once again teamed up with Mike Lee of Taxidermy to bring you some great prizes just for submitting your photos to the show. Simply log on to the Outdoor Bound TV website, click on the Submit Photo button, and all the instructions and contest rules are right there. All animal photos submitted will be entered into the Hunting Grand Prize Drawing, a Remington Model 700-270 rifle, compliments of Petrick Service Station. All fish photos submitted will be entered into the Fishing Grand Prize Drawing, a professional fish mounting, compliments of Mike Liga Taxidermy. All entries must be received by December 1st to qualify. And remember, you can't win if you don't submit your photos. Here are this week's Outdoor Bound TV viewer photos.
Next, we head back to central Wisconsin for the final part of our three-part series on managing your property for trophy whitetails and other wildlife. On part one of the Wisconsin Food Plot Project, we brought in Nick Percy from Killer Food Plots to evaluate the property in central Wisconsin and to build an overall management plan for whitetails and other wildlife. In preparation for planting the food plots that Nick designed, we sprayed weed killer on each location. Then we recruited the help of our friends at MBS to rough in our food plot locations, and with the addition of a little lime and fertilizer, the plots are now ready for seed. On part two, we met Josh Gens of G2 Outdoor Products. Now Josh shared the importance of reading labels when selecting food plot seed and helped us determine which blend would be appropriate for each of our food plot locations. On the final segment of the Wisconsin Food Plot Project, we check back on the progress of our plots 30 days after planting and discuss what maintenance items are suggested to maximize the effectiveness of the plots. Then we add the final piece of our overall management plan, the incorporation of mineral stations to the property. Hi, we're back here at the Central Wisconsin Food Plot Project and we're coming back to take a look at what the food plots are looking like after just 30 days of growth after germination. And we're also gonna go through a couple steps to uh, do some weed prevention, maintenance on those food plots and really prepare for the upcoming hunting season. Uh, we're in this particular food plot is a G2 Extreme Brassicas. You can really see how, how well it's coming along just after 30 days of growth. We got about 12 to 14 inches of forage already being produced and uh, we're only about a third of the way through the growing season. Our partner Nick Percy from Killer Food Plots had mentioned in his overall management plan for this property is having key location uh, food plots located and uh, labeled as kill plots. This is a, a great example of one of those. It's only just under half an acre. Uh, again, it's going to produce a lot of forage, so the deer aren't going to be able to eat it all out before hunting season, but it's really going to draw them in. This extreme brassica, um, going into the annual versus perennial type situation, is an annual. Uh, it's very fast growing, it's got a short growing season, uh, but it does produce a lot of forage per acre. It's going to be a great late season uh, kill plot for these guys, and we're really excited. So in the previous segment, we talked about annuals versus perennials. Growing season in the fall food plot planting world is, uh, is fairly short and is a great time to do that. However, don't get discouraged if you go into a food plot that's a perennial and it's only a couple, three, four inches tall. That's totally typical. What the plant is actually doing is developing its root system um, before it grows any forage above, above earth. So if you have that limited growth, don't get discouraged. It will happen. It'll actually take course over the next 60 to 90 days. It'll go dormancy until the spring, at which point it's really gonna explode out for you. Typically, in an annual food plot, you're gonna see eight, 10, 12 inches of growth in the first 30 to 60 days without a problem because they are annuals. They only have one growing season to get established and produce what they need to produce. Um, so that's what you're seeing here in this G2 Extreme Brassica food plot is very rapid growth and a lot of tons per acre of quality forage for your whitetails. Now in our perennial food plots on this particular farm, we're going to go and check out uh, the growth over on those ones as well and see just how much food production we've had. You're seeing uh, two to three inches of growth and the reason behind that is again, your perennials are going to take longer to get established. What the plant is actually doing after germination is developing its root system out and into the soil to provide for the next three to five years of forage production for that plant. So keep in mind when you see these food plots, it's going to be a little bit less forage up above uh, initially, but over the course of time, the next three to five years, you're going to see that production increase every year. A couple maintenance things that you can do to make your food plots just even bigger, better, and uh, more productive than what they may currently be. First, we're going to talk about supplemental seeding. Maybe you came in early, you did some seeding, you're using a broadcaster like we used in these food plots here, and you didn't quite hit every single area of your food plot. Don't worry, that's okay. We have time. Go ahead, if there's open areas, bring in some extra seed, overseed that. If you gotta rake it up, get that soil exposed again, and uh, just either walk over it, um, or just let it lay on the top of the soil and let the next rainfall work it in for you. It's a great opportunity to really fill that food plot in and get that extra production throughout the growing season here. The second one we're going to talk about is, is weed control. 
you came in, you did the proper roundup, you sprayed everything, and you thought you had good kill, and you come to find out you missed a couple of areas. Don't worry, that's not a problem. Uh, your food plot's established. Depending on what's in that particular blend, you may be able to do some supplemental uh, spraying with a, a specific herbicide. If you have broad leaves that you want to control on your perennial plots, uh, you're going to have to spray with just grass herbicide. If you have something that's in your grass, like oats, uh, annual rice, things of that nature, you can use a broadleaf herbicide. So just be specific, go to your local co-op, uh, farm supply store, or call us here at G2 Outdoor Products, and we'll be glad to help you through that process of picking the particular herbicide out that you need to control the weeds and other plants that are in your food plots. The third we're gonna talk about is a, a supplemental fertilization. This is a topical fertilization application. It's our G2 Charged Up. This is a great little supplement to get those food plots looking even better, producing more forage, and actually giving your plants more nutrition for those wildlife. And you just mix this with, uh, with water, depending if you have a backpack sprayer, a hand pump sprayer, ATV sprayer, any of those applications that are gonna work, and you're just gonna go throughout your food plot and just spray that right on topically after the plant is about three to five inches in height. Uh, it's a perfect time to get that done. It's also going to give that extra establishment and maybe choke out some of those weeds that we were just talking about. Our fourth uh, maintenance objective is supplemental periodic mowing in your perennial food plots. You're going to want to mow those, typically if you're working with clover or chicory, uh, right around the time that the product in the food plant uh, is going to start going to seed head. The reason for that is all your nutrition value, protein, is, is being produced to create that flower and that next seed, um, and you're losing that value within the plant that the wildlife is eating. So go ahead right when that's going to happen, typically 6 to 12 inches in height, go ahead and mow that food plot. Don't scalp it, bring it down to about four to six inches, and that's just gonna create fresh, new, palatable, and nutritious food plot product for, for your whitetails. One of the other benefits you're gonna see of supplemental mowing is the big forage, the uh, eight to 12 inch forage has been probably shading out and kind of choking out the intermediate to medium perennial products that are in these blends. Uh, when you mow that back, you're actually going to provide more sunlight and growth opportunity for that food plot just to expand and grow in and thicken up and actually start choking out some of those weeds that you might be concerned about. Josh, thanks. Those are some great tips on the maintenance of our food plot. Now next, we catch up with Matt Surwa from Real Deal Mineral at one of the trade shows. Matt gives us some of the strategies to look for when applying mineral stations to our test property. Uh, one of the questions that I get asked quite a bit is uh, how many mineral stations would you put on your piece of property? Uh, a good rule of thumb that I use or tell people is that uh, one mineral station per 40 acres seems to work pretty good, possibly close to a bedding area or corridor. We recommend putting it on a stump. Uh, if you don't have a stump available, I'll put a board out. Uh, we try and keep it dry, as dry as possible. The deer seem to prefer it that way. After evaluating this property in central Wisconsin, we decided that six mineral stations would be a good number. We located the mineral sites at travel corridors and near the bedding areas, which is the marsh. You don't want to just go out in the middle of the woods and dump it out. You want to put it where deer are frequenting and traveling. Another question I get asked quite a bit is how much to put out. It depends on the time of year and how many deer you have on your particular property. A good starting point is to put out about five pounds a week and then see how it goes from there. Uh, if you're putting a trail camera over the, the mineral site, you'll get a good indication of how many deer are visiting the mineral site and how many deer you got coming. We see real heavy consumption of mineral in July and August. With the bucks, you'll get a good inventory of every buck on your property or neighboring properties. They just all seem to really like the mineral in July and August, early September. One of the things you'll see when you're, when you're putting your mineral stations out is that all the deer visited, the does, the fawns, at uh, three, four weeks old, they're already eating minerals. One of the key advantages to our mineral uh, versus our competitors is we don't put a lot of salt in our mineral. We have less than 7% salt. And if you look at the, the ingredients of a lot of other minerals out there, uh, they're 60, 70, 80% salt. And you know that's not really uh, healthy for the deer, just like it's not healthy for you or I to consume a lot of salt. So with our mineral, we put high concentrations of uh, calcium and phosphorus and then trace minerals. 
and vitamins that uh, science says deer need, not only for bucks to grow horns, but also for the does and fawns and, and lactation for the fawns in the springtime. So it's kind of an overall herd health uh, mineral. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Real Deal Mineral, Weiss Realty, Chilson Automotive, and MBS. Real Deal Mineral. Deer eat it gone. Real Deal Mineral is the real deal. It contains less than 7% salt and more of the minerals deer need for proper gestation. And it's a great way to ensure that your deer are getting the proper vitamins and minerals they need to grow big horns. We started using Real Deal Mineral on our farm this year and the results, well, they speak for themselves. Real Deal Mineral. Check out our website or a dealer near you. Weiss Realty will find the perfect property for you. The entire Weiss team of agents brings expert knowledge from every aspect of the outdoors and specializes in hunting land in rural properties. Whether it's hunting, fishing, farming, logging, or construction, we have the answers to your questions. Buying or selling, hunting or farmland? Contact a land specialist from the Weiss team today. Weiss Realty, we cover a lot of ground. We know shopping for a new vehicle is not everyone's favorite thing to do, but here at the Chilson family of dealerships, we make it easy and stress-free when purchasing your next new Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, or Ram vehicle. We believe in an easy, no-hassle buying experience, upfront pricing on all of our vehicles, and low-pressure, non-commissioned sales force whose only motivation is finding you the perfect vehicle. For the best price and the best selection on any new Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, or Ram vehicle, visit either of our friendly dealerships and let our family take care of your family. Since 1999, McCuffsky Brush Service has been specializing in right-of-way clearing for power, gas, fiber optic, cable lines, and railroads. MBS is your complete brush and tree removal company, and we also clear woods roads and food plots. Whether working on residential tree trimming or commercial projects, MBS utilizes the most advanced equipment and environmentally friendly clearing methods available. MBS, clearing the way to reliable energy. Visit our website for more information. Archery equipment provided for Outdoor Bound TV by Mission by Matthews, True Fire Releases, Optimizer by HHA Sports, and Tacticam. Well, that's our last mineral station here on our Central Wisconsin Food Plot Project. Matt, thanks for the tips on how to incorporate mineral stations into our management plan. Now, we hope you've picked up a few tips on these last three segments on how to better manage your property for trophy whitetails and other wildlife. And hey guys, what a great trip to Nestor Falls, Ontario. It looks like fly-in fishing truly is a lot of fun. Join us again here next week when we'll bring you more great hunting and fishing action from around the Midwest, around the nation, and around the world, right here on Outdoor Bound TV. I suppose you want me like this, kinda. The fourth, okay, now I was just thinking the fourth, but not last again. Oh. Look at our food pots, yours probably suck, but ours are great. Oh. What the hell is that? Nice small one. Oh, there he goes. We're not going to tell you how we did it. Not one of the bigger ones, but we will take him. That's weak. Did you get that?